Hi, my name is Anna Traglin, and today I'm going to give a brief lesson in how to draw a Pomeranian dog. We're going to use soft pastels and Conchi crayons. We're going to start with the soft pastels, and we're going to pick a nice light colored pastel so that it doesn't leave too much of a mark on the page. And what we're going to do is draw a very rough outline of this dog so we know where we can position him in the composition of the page. So here goes. Notice how everything breaks down geometrically into circles and squares and rectangles. On this dog, we're seeing a little bit of all of those things. And over here and over here, it's just going to go down like this. And then we're going to put the feet in here, here. That's not where a foot goes. Here and here and right here at the back. Now we can just gently take our hand and wipe off the pastel that's in the wrong place without having to use an eraser. See how clearly that wipes off? All right, so we're gonna start breaking down the shapes of this dog. I think that we've ascertained that the dog, top of the dog's head is going to be at a slant like this, going downward like this, and then the ears are going to be on either side of the head and we're going to look at how narrow the head shape is compared to the rest of the body look at how narrow that is there the ears are quite close together so we're going to put the ears in quite close together ears and now we're going to swoop around and the head which comes way out here is going to be part of the body as we see the whole line moving down like this and then towards the back we see a slope that's almost a solid slope going all the way down and then out of the photo a little bit and that's where we find our third foot we're going to assume the fourth foot is hidden and that the dog doesn't actually have just three feet let's put in some more of the shapes of the body up here real loosely again just loose and free and light. You're not making a commitment to anything. There we go. And now, speaking of commitments, let's put in where the eyes go with plumb lines and then down the middle. The dog is symmetrical. And here's the nose and the mouth area. And the eyes will fit in here on either side of the nose like this. So this dog, this Pomeranian, is a member of the Spitz family, like the Samoyeds and American Eskimo dogs. So the dog also has a shape like one of those dogs, like an actual Arctic sled dog. Although not the same temperament at all, of course. So let's start hitting this with a little darker color and see what happens. I think that this is a good color, right here. Let's match it. It's not, it's not a good color. So we're gonna keep pulling out our pastels until we find something that matches the color in the page. Here's, here's a good color, let's see. No, it's too orange. We need a good goldenrod yellow for this part. And let's go with a lighter version because you can always go darker, but you can't always go lighter. So we're gonna use this color here. How's this for a match? I think this will work. Let's hit it. So the head is all one color, but the ears are actually gonna be a different color. Let's work this in. The, the color part that's not white is gonna go around the eyes like this. And now we can fill that in with some nice, loose, shaggy lines. There's the mouth area, which we want to make sure we fit in. And we're going to put some more fur up here. Now here's a good thing about using pastels. You don't need to really scrub everything in. 
we've put down the basic lines so we can gently massage the pastel into the paper and it covers it like a watercolor paint almost. So we're gonna look some more. Let's see here. What did we do with that color? Well, I think we're gonna have to use a different color now. So this is a pretty bright color, but this is a pretty bright dog, so I think this will work. And then we're gonna come down over the back. It's very, very colorful. And then down around here, around the front paw area, right here, put in some color and some color here. Now let's go down the front of the body here with this. And even though this is not this color, we're gonna just mark it in, mark the feet in, so we know where they go. And we'll be able to go over those with Conti Crayon in a minute. But first we're gonna get all the general outlines of this dog in. So here's some more of that apricot color around towards the back. Okay. So let's go ahead and blend this in. Looks like we need to put a little more down the back there to join the back to the rest of the body. Well, let's go ahead and reach for a Conti crayon and we're gonna put some details in around the face. Let's start with a brown Conti crayon because again, you can always go darker, but you can't go, you can always go lighter, but you can't go darker. So it looks like there's a, a dark area coming up through here. Notice this is a somewhat harder pastel. It's baked in a kiln like pottery. They're very, very highly breakable, but they do a great job on getting details when you're drawing with pastels. You can just switch to here and you can get something that lasts. Now, what I'm seeing here is a lot of black around the eyes, nose, and mouth. Let's put a little brown in here for the pupil, for the iris. We're leaving space to get, to have light hit this. Look, there's some black and dark brown fringes coming down from the ears here. Let's fill those in. Come back to that. Let's see, what else do we have here that we can hit with a brown? we can start delineating this area so that it'll be easier when it comes time to do that part. And then down the back like this. that the groom on the dog keeps this dog a very specific shape. Look, there's the mouth. We have to add in the mouth. We'll give it a little smile because it's a nice day today. And we work around the muzzle like this. We see some almost eye makeup on the dog at the sides and there's his eyebrows. This dog has more of an under eyebrow situation. How about the top of that head? It's just a little white. So we're gonna delineate this with the brown. And we're gonna come down here like this. Okay. Let's put a little black in there. So here are our eyes. We're making sure to leave some white in the eyes so that there's a sparkle. We'll do the nose. This nose is light on top. 
Their dog noses are almost always lighter on top than they are on the bottom. And there's the mouth. And it's sort of a interesting shape there, almost like an anchor shape. And we come around like this. And the jaw is very wide. Here we go, through here. And we mark through where the fur is. We do not have to add any white because of the white of the paper contributing. Let's see here. Looks like there's some pretty prominent fur coming out right here. So let's do that. Here's the fur on the chest. Notice we don't have to get too heavy with the black as we go through there. We are going to need to do this. All right, we're coming close to the end of this, so we're gonna go ahead and put some orange on. Here's the orange. The orange will sort of make it pop. This dog is not an orange dog. He's a reddish colored dog, so he's not actually an orange dog. Now let's fill in these areas up here like this. Lots of orange fur up here. Lots of orange fur. So if you want to fluff up your dog here, you can hold him and brush him backwards and that will make him very fluffy. Obviously not on the page you can't do that because this isn't a real dog. But if you were there with this Pomeranian, I would ask you to brush him backwards so that his coat would fluff up. And then down here, sorry that we can't get that together there, here we go, like this, and through here. So one of the things that you can do with pastels is when you draw over a pastel area, you can blend it a little bit. Just be sure to make sure, always wipe your pastel off before you put it in another area so that you don't mix the colors by accident. Okay, so let's do a little more blending. See how it's all coming together now. You can do this blending with your hand or you can use something called a chamois cloth, which is a very soft piece of fabric that will blend nicely. You wanna be sure once again, to always check your blending material, whether it's your hand or a chamois cloth or even an eyebrow, or I'm sorry, uh, eye makeup wand. If you use them right next to each other, you may get some kind of bleed over. So see how my hands are, they're now covered, so I need to wipe them off. And that's why I wear this kind of smock, so I can wipe my colors off of myself. So we're coming very close to the end here, and this is what we're going to do now. It's a little trick that I like to do to make dogs that are one color like this really pop. So we see our dog here is orange. When we're thinking about colors, we think about the, the main primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. Red and yellow make orange. So we think about if red and yellow make orange, that leaves blue as the remaining color. And that means adding some blue to this picture will make it really pop. So let's add a little blue. Here's a good blue. 
we're just going to put this in as like a highlight. It's not actually showing up in the photo. So just a little bit of this. And we don't want to put it in the light areas. We want to put it in areas where it's very subtle. We put it in some black areas, a little bit around the black areas there. Look, we're outlining it in blue. And here's some blue through here and defining the leg. Come out like this down like this and through like that now what can we do here what needs to be done it looks like almost everything here is set let's go over things one more time with that dark Conti crayon we're going to use the black Conti crayon to finish this off Notice that I started with big shapes and worked smaller rather than starting with details and having to worry about that as I went. It's never a good idea to start with details. You always want to start with the big picture first. Then you can add in as you go. If you start with the big picture first, you know what your composition will look like. What is composition? Composition is how your picture looks on the page. What size and what shape your picture is. What your picture is trying to say. If we had made this dog all details and put him down here in the small area, he would convey loneliness and sadness and we would be very sad for him. But when he's large and in charge like this, we know this is a happy dog that has a good life and feels really good about himself. Everybody wants to see a picture of an animal that has a good life and feels good about themselves. And that's the kind of artwork that I do. Put the toes in. And some more toes and there we go Oops. outline the eyes now you can add whiskers and I often do but don't add the whiskers until the end because they'll just get covered up so here is our picture. Looks like we did it. So what's the most important thing that an artist can do when they finish a picture? Sign the picture. Take that black Conti crayon. Pick an area in the composition, which we talked about, where you can put the name in subtly. Let's do it right here, right along the body. A, B, T. And there we are. This has been Anna Troglin teaching you how to draw a pastel dog. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.